and we are officially live, baby. Yes. Dude, What's happening? Dave Zajazinski. What's so up, close. <laughs> Give me the pronouncement of the last name. You were you were right there. So it's Zajinski. Zajinski. Okay. That's it. Uh, or we go by the Z team because that's easier. Go by the Z team. I love it, man. I love it. Dude, listen, I feel like I know you, man, but you know, I don't know, I guess, a lot about you. Uh, obviously, we have some common connections. You know, you are uh, you're out in Tempe, Arizona, um, handling your business. Uh, we, we have some common connections and, and Kevin Kaufman. And, um, you know, I'm just excited to learn a little bit more about your story um, and, and about, you know, kind of how you got into real estate. So it, let's just start it off by saying, uh, welcome to the show. And why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, your real estate background? Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. I love these shows that you do with people. They're they're awesome. So I'm I'm honored to be on here because you're doing some good stuff. Thanks, brother. But, yeah, real estate. Um, gosh, I didn't think I would end up in real estate the way I did, but it was a product of my wife. My wife, when we were engaged, didn't want to go live in Davenport, Iowa, while I went through chiropractor school. She's like, "It, I don't want to move out there for four years and and suffer through that." And so I was on my way to do, you know, something in medicine. And I always loved real estate. Like I bought my first condo when I was 22 years old and yeah. um, started buying rental properties. And I thought, you know, I could do real estate. I think this would be this would be fun. So I spent. Um, and I don't blame it all on my wife. I was totally into doing real estate, and I, secretly I didn't really want to go. And so she's not even here yeah, to defend herself, Dave. Right, I know, right. <laughs> but so I'm glad she was like, "Do you? Are you really want to go to Davenport, Iowa, like a quad city? Come on." So um, we got into real estate, and I started doing it slowly. And then I got into new homes when it was booming in Arizona: oh four, oh five, oh six, oh seven. All through the the run up, I was selling for a builder, new homes, good money. It was fun, and then they went bankrupt. Yeah, went bankrupt when the market crashed. And I thought, how do I go make the money I was making right away in real estate? It was hard. So my first two years in you know resale real estate were it was not fun at all. I, I made in a year about what I was making in a month in in selling new homes, and I just started. We just start our family. So it was, it's not fun. So yeah. part of why I love owning the team and, and part of why I define my purpose is removing financial uncertainty for agents. Cause I was so financially uncertain for those first few years. Yeah. It was rough, right? Starting, I got an office. I was at Remax. I was on a hundred percent split. Like, Oh, I, I won't, I won't do an 80, 20. Like, let me pay you a monthly office bill. And start lead generating and building all that stuff. And I just, I gave away half of what I made just to get started. Yeah. So I wish I'd have jumped on a team right when I got into real estate, kind of compress that learning curve, you know, yeah. and, and start leveraging people. So uh, I like the team because of how tough it was for me to get started. Yep. So tell me like when you got, when you first got into the business, um, what would, I mean, obviously you didn't know what you didn't know. Was, did you get into the business with the intent to build a team or were you just trying to crush it as a solo agent? I was, I showed up at my builder and the door was locked. The, my keys didn't work. When I called my sales manager, I said, what's going on? They said, well, we're going bankrupt. And I had a real estate license and I knew I was making good money in it and other people yeah. could. So I was like, I'll just, and I, I do like real estate. I've always loved that tangible asset that you can have and you know it's such a big part of the fabric of our <clears throat> of our society owning a home it's so good yeah. for families and kids and that stability so i was always attracted to that um so i got into it just because i i wanted to have rental properties i wanted to own homes and i i never thought i would start a team in fact how i started my team was um just agents you know there was an agent sitting outside my office door and I was like, can I help you? And I'm like, oh, you know, our broker said I should talk to you because I think I was going to sell 52 houses that year on my own. And, I, you know, I didn't even have an admin. I didn't have anybody on my team. And so I kind of developed a reputation around the office that I just wouldn't return phone calls. Like buyers would call and they're like, I'm trying to reach this guy to go look at his house and he's not calling just because I, I didn't have the capacity to. So that is how the team kind of started was, Kind of like somebody's dropped on your doorstep. I'm like, yeah, you can come on the team and and just I don't want to 
manage you and I don't want to spend time on this. I don't have any systems. Just answer you. I think I probably had 25 listings. I'm like, just answer the phones when, yeah. when people start to call, can you answer them and, and go, and uh, she's still with me and we have a great relationship and she, she crushes it, but that's how the team started. Even to my second team member and my third team member, just kind of coming on that way and um, not starting it to be intentional. Now I am. And now I've seen, man, I wish I'd done this sooner because I've, they've impacted my life. I've impacted their life. We, we leverage each other so well. You know, I thought, well, why didn't I start this before? And it, we're having so much fun. What was it like for you guys um, like at the bottom of the market? So, I mean, obviously you were flying high, you were making great money, you said, and then um, the market tanked, your builder went bankrupt. Talk about that experience. Like when you, you when you knew that it was kind of up to you at this point, whether you sank or swim. Um, yeah. Talked about that experience. Yeah, there was a lot of uncertainty there. Um, you know, you get a little bit of fear, like, how's this going to work? I've never done this before. And, you know, luckily I had some savings and we relied on that. And actually the best thing that happened to me was, um, can you hear that ringing? No. Um, nope. What happened to me is I was so overextended in the downturn because I was working for builders. And so in 06, I bought, I think, $1.6 million of real estate in 06 at the peak of the market in Phoenix. So by 08, I thought, this is bad. Like I'm 29 years old, 30 years old, and we're way upside down. So I did three short sales that year. Yeah. And by um, November of 09, I had 40 short sales on the market. So I took that pain that I went through. Yeah. I took kind of the embarrassment and, you know, we had just built a really nice home and, and a year later we're selling it. And uh, I didn't really have anybody to walk me through it because I was a brand new agent just coming out of new home sales. And so we wrote a check for about 30,000 to sell that property. Wow. And we thought, well, it'll get us out of that mortgage and we'll kind of get, it'll get, it will start to write the ship. And so that was the turning point for me where once I did three short sales after that, I thought, man, why did I do that? Like I could have kept that money. I need that money. I had it at the time, but I didn't know we were going to have five kids. My wife and I, we have five kids. I didn't know that at the time. And so nav not knowing how to navigate through that and making a big mistake, like coming up with that kind of money where within a month, the same lender approved me to do a short sale. Yeah. I was like, I, I could have done that on the first house. So I kind of took that as uh, like a PhD in how to not do what not to do when you're upside down. Yeah. And so I was gonna ask I, it you, developed a passion. I was going to ask you if that, if that experience um, still impacts you at all today in your decision-making. Absolutely. It was, you know, when I listen to people that I admire and, and study, usually their failed businesses are where they learn the most. Right. And the, and it's in, it's in those failures or how I like to say it, it's in, it's in my pain became my purpose. So yeah even though we both know Kevin Kaufman and, and Fred Weaver, those guys have always killed it. And it, when the short sales were going, I actually was able to take that torch later on. And I was number, you know, number one in short sales for a number of years in the Valley, because I was able to sit down with people and say, don't write a check for 30,000. You're going to need it when you're 60, when you're 80 or whenever, you know, there there's alternatives to get out of this. Right. And so um, I felt such high moral pressure to, I'm a man, I'm going to live up to what I need to do and what I said I was going to do. And then, um, you know, I had a law professor down at university of Arizona. We were doing a radio show together for real estate and he really got into, let's take the morality out of these. These, these are contracts. They'll foreclose on you and they'll take your equity and they'll, they'll enforce, they'll kick people out. Like we've removed morality this is a contract and you can actually get out of these contracts. And, mm -hmm. and but I struggled with the morality of doing it. Yeah. And um, it was a great lesson because I was to sit down with people and say, I've been where you're at, I've done it. And, and so I have a lot of empathy for people going through short sales. So that was really my bread and butter for uh, eight years. Yeah. Doing short sales, And I love them. Is, is so is that you kind of cut your teeth on short sales and, and you really, um, you built a great business, obviously, and had a, a, a 
you had obviously trusted partners in in uh, in, in banks that that uh, were were you know giving you deals because they knew you could get the job done. But tell me at what point then? Because um, you said at first when when you know you started to build a team, it's like okay, yeah, you can join my team. You probably didn't have a whole lot of uh, systems or processes built out. It was just like hey, you know, yeah, you answer the phone when I can't answer it, right? And you take this showing when I right. can't take it. When, how did that morph for you? Like, when, tell me. Tell me the evolution of that business when you started to realize, I, I, I think I've really got something here. And you really started to put more into um, sculpting and molding the business, the team. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, so it was kind of by accident. And then about three years ago, I was listening to Brian Buffini. I, was, I saw him live at a Remax event and he just challenged us to are we living up to our full potential? He was just writing his book, The Immigrant Edge, and talked about what would somebody give in another part of the world? What would they be willing to risk to have what you have? Like, I, you know, he came over with $70 in his wallet from Ireland, left his family behind, left his world behind uh, because he saw that opportunity. So he just challenged us, to, where are you at and what kind of opportunity do you have? And so I... At that point, I kind of took, took a full audit of myself and said, you know, I think I do have a lot to offer that I'm not tapping into. And um, so personal improvement and a pursuit of learning and masterminding, that became my dedication. And I was a solo agent working from home or in the office a little bit. And so I had a few people that piggybacked on that there was a guy in my office who just said are you are you happy doing what you're doing i think you could be doing more and i said well I, yeah i kind of make a good living and i don't have to work that a whole lot he's like is that is that all you want from mine so really got challenged on the personal improvement aspect of my life and i just started studying people in the business i yeah. stepped out started to connect started to go to events went to my first conferences and um I think I spent eight thousand dollars in September of this year for conferences. Going to see John Chaplick, went to spend some time with Jay Kinder. Uh, just and now, I have this high-level commitment of learning from people. Like you, seeing your business and what you're doing, uh, I, I just started stepping outside of just my little world to go study what successful people were doing and just said, well, if you're using that system, I'll use it. If you're doing it that way, I'll do it. And yeah. that's what really attracted me to where we're at now is uh, following guys like Kevin Kaufman and Curtis Johnson. And when they made that move and I started to understand it, I wanted to tap into those guys. Yeah. And, and so I, I, I want to dig into that a little bit because, you know, obviously you've got this business, you're selling real estate at a high level, man. You run, you run a, you run a team, you guys, how many homes a year do you guys sell? Yeah. So we are, um, I only have three full-time agents and okay. we just uh, have done 90 for the last 12 months. Okay. So you're right around a hundred deals a year. I mean, th that is like, that is, so that is the precipice of success in real estate. I mean, it's, you know, when you get to that hundred mark, it's like, um, it, it's like, you, you know, you're considered a success. And so for you, I mean, you're running this team, you're selling 90 homes a year and, um, you know, you're going along, there's not a whole heck of a lot of reason to change anything, right? But you, you, you know, obviously you, you, you start to pay attention to what's going on nationally. Um, if you're anything, if, if you're any, if you're anything like me, you, you see that, you know, you take the blinders off um, and you, you're, you're, you're seeing that, you know, um, Kyle Whistle, Dan Beer, Curtis Johnson, um, Jay Kinder, Mike Reese, um, Al Stacey, great, all these guys, yeah. man. And I, I probably forgot to mention some of them. Obviously, Kevin and, and Fred, um, they start to make the migration over to this company, EXP, and then you perk up and, and what happens? Yeah. You know, I, you mentioned Dan Beer. I started doing masterminds with, um, with the title company. I saw Dan, it was my first intro into that world where. Uh, I had somebody reach out and say, hey, Dan Beer is going to speak to a private event. And are you interested in going? And when I saw the production he was doing and how much he shared, he just gave us so much good content. So I got to know his name and, and a few others that were producing two, three hundred, you know, $250 million a year that you just got to 
to um, to see. So that was now on my radar, just seeing this type of production, seeing some of these people. And then once I saw um, some of the people I was just admiring from afar start to go, um, I was remember I had uh, I had lunch with Kevin Kaufman about a year ago, maybe a little over a year ago, just to get to know him, to try to um, see if he could help me grow. And then we had a mutual friend that set it up. And Kevin and I had talked, you know, just occasionally here or there. And then the day Kevin and Fred moved, I'd already been looking at at, at EXP from yeah. maybe January, February. I was up at Inman Connect. I went to the Inman Connect conference in New York, saw it for the first time, and it, it, it intrigued me. But I wasn't ready to move because it just, I was happy at Remax. I, that's the only place I'd ever been. I loved my office. I loved my broker. I loved the culture there. We were a high producing um, office. So even doing 80 units a year, like I'm, I, you're not the top agent there. So I love being around that environment where there were a lot of people producing at a high level. So I just wanted to surround myself with there. But once Kevin and Fred moved, uh, I texted our mutual friend and said, you know, you told me to ignore EXP and now Kevin and Fred just moved. What's going on? You know? And he said, like, I know it's crazy. Why don't, why don't you reach out to Kevin and, and see what's going on? So I think the day after he moved, Kevin and Fred took his team over there. I, I reached out to Kevin. I'm like, I, I've been interested, but now I'm really interested. And I want to talk more, you know, and what was great was we just started a conversation about, him saying, well, what do you want? What do you need? Where do you want to go? What's important? And how could I help you? We, we never really talked about the nuts and bolts of EXP until much later. Uh, but he, you know, he just talked about how do we partner with you to get to where you want to be? You know, mm -hmm. my goal is to get to $100 million. Um, so we got to make a good jump to get to $100 million. Kevin said, look, I can get you there in two years. Give me some sustained focus mastermind with us i'll 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 show you how we went to 100 million and then how we went beyond that and that was and it wasn't just lip service there was a real willingness to help and some very concrete immediate ideas of here, here's what i think you can do this is the first thing i would do if i had your business and that was so attractive that they were that interested in in my production in the same market yeah we're we're both in tempe we're, com we're competing for the same buyers and sellers. And he said, what can I do to help you in your business? And it was, uh, it was just very attractive. It's yeah, it's, it's very service. It's, it's coming from a place of abundance, right? It's like, it's not, it's the, because the traditional real estate agent looks at that uh, as, as, as a, as a competitive relationship, right? And the reality of it is right. there's enough business to go around. You know, Kevin's a right. good dude, man. Uh, both Ked, uh, Fred and Kevin are really good guys. Um, you know, I had them on um, probably a month or so ago, and they're just so willing to share, um, which, you know, it, 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 that, I think that's why they do so well is because they understand that, 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 um, that there is, there's enough for everybody, uh, especially right. if you're willing to commit um, at a high level and go out and mastermind to read books, right? And to, you know, to hire a coach, all these different things, if you're willing to invest in yourself, you know, yeah. um, I have the Audible app on my phone, right? I listen to a lot of books. I mean, when I'm riding around in the car and stuff, and I am um, an interesting. They they have you can you can look at the 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 number of books that you've read on the app if you go to your settings. And um, what's really cool is I noticed that um, that there is a there is a correlation between the number of books that I've read and my my income. And so, like, I go back because. I've really I've had a license since 2002, um, okay. but I so I worked for a team uh, when I first got into the business, and I was just a buyer specialist. And then the market crashed, right? And so in yeah. 2008 um, or in 2009, excuse me, we I did I I did exactly what you did. I had to short sell my house, like we moved into a condominium. It was a very humbling experience. I knew I would get yeah. back into real estate. I just didn't know when. And um, so 2000 four rolls or excuse me, 2014 rolls around and I get back in the business at that time. And so, and then I start doing all this personal development, right? I start reading books. So it shows 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017. And, and yeah. it's just this, it's like this hockey stick curb and the number of books I started reading. And it's like, 
that isn't that what it's all about, man. It's it's, it's all about yeah. it, it's it's not how much money you make. It's who you become and who you become. Right. It, the money is a byproduct of who you become. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's just the scoreboard. Right. Yeah. For, uh, that's what did it for me. And that's when I'm talking to agents to say, how do I get into production at that level? You know, I'll get to 50 units by yourself and 100% that. Yeah. You know, it work on yourself first. And so um, there is a, a good agent who uh, Nate Randleman's his name. He, and uh, he he's a very successful home flipper, but we were office from across each other. And he used to want to challenge me about where I'm at and on his desk had uh, income improvement always follows personal improvement. And he was really, the first guy to really um, push me into that. And he's like six, five. I thought he was like my age. And he said something about, oh, you know, guys like your age. I'm like, well, you mean my age? And he's like, no, man, I'm 30. I'm like, what? you're 10 years younger than me? And like, he's killing it. And he was just dedicated to that personal improvement. Yeah. And that's what did it for me. And that's what I like being on the team like leading the team. That's what excites me. That's what gets me up in the morning and to read these books, to stay like, I've got team members that are just crushing it. that I got to stay ahead of. Yeah. I got to stay out in front of them and make sure I'm able to challenge them and um, inspire them. And they keep me, that's what gets me out of bed. It's not which home am I going to sell today? It's like, how do I pour myself into this team? So how am I a better version so becoming my best version is now my life's pursuit. Yep. And, the, you know, the interesting thing about that is that, you, you know, you're right. It's like you're you're as their world increases in size, your world has to increase, increase even more so that you can continue to fit their worlds inside yours. Otherwise, when you can't continue to provide value anymore, then they go seek it elsewhere. Right. And so right. I, I love that now your challenge is 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 seeking. Um, seeking you know advice or guidance in how to continue to grow your world so that you can continue to grow theirs that's really awesome yeah. man so so talk about okay so so we, we're up to the point to where you talk to to, to kevin right and you're you're yeah. at remax and then and then what happens like what piece of how does it all come together for you like what information do you get that then that triggers that all right i'm doing this yeah so there's a couple of things so the the most important one for me was the commitment I saw from Kevin Fred and Curtis Johnson about coaching me in my business because they're where I want to be. And that's yeah. really the primary because, you know, people would say, well, what if this happens to the company? What if what if the stock does this? I go, well, if I can get to 100 million, I get to keep that and I get to be a better person and I'm going to compress my learning curve and my growth is going to be greatly accelerated by having those people in my world committed to helping me. Like yeah. when I reach out they're they're there. So that was really at the forefront because there's a lot of unknowns as to what can happen, but I know spending time with those people is going to pay off. And I know it wasn't just lip service. Like I said, I knew that was going to happen. And I was seeing it. So I wanted more of that. And I wanted to be part of that. I didn't want to leech and say, oh, I'm just going to take, take, take. So I want to be part of that, giving back to them. And then, you know, I had two agents in here up until 11.55 before we jumped on the call talking about them joining uh, both just as business partners or as team members. Mm -hmm. And it's either way is it going to benefit them. And I was honestly able to give them an hour of my time how can I help them? Like, and, and whether they come on or not, I, it doesn't really matter. But stepping out and saying, I've got, I can carve out an hour of my time today. I did, did that at 8.30 this morning with somebody and I'm doing it again. And when we get off this call at one o'clock, I've got another agent coming in just to say, hey, I've, you know, I've gone from no sales to 14 sales to 50 sales. I might be able to help you. And let me, let me know how I can help you. So I was getting it and now I want to give it. But really what did it for me was um, I'm very much concerned about my team. I'm very much concerned about the people I'm going to work with. Like I just think it would be 
the worst thing if I promise somebody that I can help them and then I don't. Like I can't live up to that. Like I can't think of anything worse than say, leave your career, leave your comfort zone, come unite yourself with me and then I fail. Like I failed to provide the culture, the training, the leads, whatever that I couldn't live with that. So yeah. once I saw that um, I could have my team members hit their financial goals so much sooner and have that ability to break through as like, you know, you were a buyer specialist and you start a team. Well, we've got that leverage from being on the team, but we, there was a lot of cost to get there. Like yeah. I, I, you know, for me to grow a team, we all know growth just takes money and there's risk, but we're getting rewarded for that. So once I saw that the team could participate in their passive income growth, it, that motivated me even more to say, guys, like you're making good money. You're making the money you want to make now, but what are you doing for retirement? Like what's your exit strategy? Yeah. And this move created such a phenomenal exit strategy for my team that I wanted it more for them than for myself. Yeah. And I wanted them to see it. And it took some time. So I was patient. I didn't say, Hey guys, um, it's, it's May and I'm leaving and whoever wants to come can come. I threw it out there. I said, this is what I see. This is why I think it makes sense for us. And I'd love for you all to join me. And, and we didn't move until September. Okay. And I wish we had moved sooner, but I wanted it. I wanted the whole family to come over and for them, them to see it and then to know how that was going to benefit them. Yep. And, and so that was actually my next question is how did you approach them? Because, you know, everybody has a different way of, of doing things. And, and, you know, obviously um, you hold your team in very high regard. You're very, you're, you're a tight knit bunch. You're close with your, with your people. And so what did that look like? I mean, tell me like, how did you approach them? Um, what were what were your conversations like with them for other team leaders that are listening? Yeah. So one of the first things I did is I got Kevin and Curtis into the office to really take some people who know what they're doing and hear it from other people and, and get to understand it at that level. I didn't understand it. So I brought them in. I thought that was important. And I just said, let's be open-minded about this and let's, let's talk about it. And they're, um, I know there was some uncertainty because they were at Remax for a reason. And one of them was only there for a year and, you know, changing. So it was really um, talking about where we want to be, what are our goals, how are we going to achieve them and how this is going to, this is going to accelerate those and giving them, I think the best thing we could do as team leaders or anybody who's doing this is really just to turn it over to the best, turn it over to Brent Grove. So guys, just watch this. I think we watched that video like four times as a team, you know, it's a new RE and we said, are we seeing it? Are we not seeing it? And I, I wanted everybody to come to their own conclusion. And so we got to a point where I said, guys, I really want to move, but tell me where you're at, you know? And, and I had them all individually tell me I, I want to move. It makes sense. Let's do it. And, um, but it, I think saying, this is what I see and I would want to go, but giving them, empowering them to say, is this what you want to do? Like we're a team, we're business partners. What do you, what do you want to do? You know? So being as detailed as possible, um, cause th this is the real meat and potatoes question right here. Ultimately, why did you feel like EXP Realty was a better fit than Remax for you and your team? Yeah. Um, so my couple of components, right? We'll, we'll separate them. Um, if we just want to start with the fees, I was spending about 50,000 a year for my team at, at Remax. So I had to pay that. And, um, I saw the money that went into, to Remax and, um, I, I had hired a new director of operations and she was with Keller Williams for a long time. Mm -hmm. She came over and said, okay, what does Remax do for us? Now that I'm coming over, like what systems are we going to use? I go, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think they really do anything. Like it's a great brand. People know it, but I said, I don't know. I said, really, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to answer that question. Like we don't have any systems in place, so I'm not getting anything there, but I like the brand. So when I looked at that cost and where it was going and even my broker said, Hey, I only get like half of it. The other half goes to international. So, you know, he wasn't seeing all of it. So, I thought, okay, that is a big expense. 
Um, and what am I, what's my value in return for that? And then you see, it's going to cost me the same at EXP. It's about the same when you look at our splits, but, you know, to get detailed, you know, for me, immediately when I move over, I pay that 50, but I get 27,000 back right away with my icon award and cap, you know, all of those benefits where EXP says, look, we're not going to pay for all of these buildings and all of these the uh, maintenance costs and it doesn't have to go to all that you guys get it back and i got to see wow i can immediately return twenty seven thousand back into my business okay. okay that's significant that's over a 20-year period i'm 41 i do that for the next 20 years that's a lot of money yeah just from that aspect and so i saw that number and then really it was the names that started to move the 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 people that i had already seen they are doing a tremendous amount of real estate. They're the biggest thinkers. They're the biggest players. They, they, I think, are out ahead of, of more people. And when they started going, so you mentioned the name, like when Dan Beers went and Kyle Whistle and and you went and Kevin Kaufman and Curtis, I was like, man, they, they are already doing it. Real estate at such a high level. I have to imagine they investigated this at a high level. So, so that really got me going, but seeing the honest commitment from people to collaborate is what did it. And even yeah. so after I joined, it was within a week of joining, I was out at, uh, you know, with spending time with Jay Kinder at an event he was putting on. And I mean, I think I spent an hour with him that first night and he it's like, oh yeah, you joined under Curtis. Like there's a year ago, I don't know if I'd have gotten the same time with him. You know, and that's, and he, he's a good guy and everyone's a good guy, but honestly, time is our greatest asset. It's what we have to guard the most. Um, and so I do have to be judicious about my time. We all do. And I don't think I would have done this a year ago if you had just reached out to me, you were at this brokerage and then that brokerage and say, yeah, like Mike, I got a lot going on. I don't have time to jump on a call really. Um, so it changed my whole paradigm about, coming from a place of abundance, like you talk about. Yep. And, this, and this goes back this to, sorry to, sorry to interrupt you, but this actually goes back to what we were talking to about 10 minutes ago when we were talking about um, um, being able to um, tap into different resources, whether it be books or masterminds or seminars. Um, um, that has been one of the coolest things, um, Dave, that you mentioned about being able to tap into some of these players, right? That maybe normally, we would not have had access to before. Um, Kender's been a huge influence on my business. He was the one, the one guy that um, when I started really um, trying to hone my skills in real estate in 2014, that was um, kind of a mentor from afar for me. And so I followed his business, and um, I've continued to follow him and Mike Reese for uh, for a long time now. And now it's like I've got I've got his cell phone number, right? I could call him or text him anytime. It is it is like the most amazing right. opportunity for collaboration within an industry I've ever seen, man. And that's exactly what I told these agents today was it's not lip service and it's it's gonna revolutionize our industry. It's gonna be so much better for the consumer, the industry, because I really feel that the cream of the crop are going to continue to come to exp and just that power of collaboration you and i connecting me connecting with jay and, and other people that would not have happened and when all of that gets shared and that momentum is built it's you're just going to see um such a shift in the the amount of transactions and 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 bodies that come over here i i, I can see that because I was just able to offer value with, to so many people today. And it's, I don't know if I'll ever get anything from it, but it doesn't matter. It is, it, it's, it's now this reciprocity that I'm getting. Like I did tell my wife, like, Hey, I've been gone 15 days this month and that's tough. But Kevin Kaufman and Curtis said, I really should go out to this John Cheplick mastermind. It's $2,000 and you know, it's time away from the family. But the only reason I did it is because the guys I have kind of pitched my wagon to in EXP said, you got to go. you got to go. And so I said, all right, and I'm going to go. I said, this is why I joined EXP. Now I was out 
with with Sheplik or with 70 of the top agents. Dan Beer was out there and, and you see all these agents and that it is really, I, I don't know, it's shocking to see how vested we are in each other. I, I've never experienced it when I was at Remax. You know, we go to a Remax event, but there was, we just didn't have this, the word I used when I talked to Kevin about, it was like a fraternity, you know, male and female all together. But it's like this real estate fraternity where we have such a, um, such a tie to each other and a willingness to help each other. It's pretty incredible. And, yeah. and that is going to pay for it far more than talking about fees and, um, and you know, what's your splits and what's that. It's like, who cares what it is? Right. I don't care. I mean, I do, but I really don't because the right. value is, is enormous to what we're paying into it. Right. And, and I feel like we've, you know, EXP nailed it with this model. I feel like Keller Williams got really close, but I feel like EXP really nailed it um, because what you have is you have a company like Remax, which is very high commission split, low value, other than right. the balloon, right? The logo, the the brand. And then you have on the other end of the spectrum, you have low commission split, um, low value, which is that those are your Coldwell bankers of the world, right? Um, and then in the middle, you know, as you get closer, you get higher commission split, higher value. And then, and then you, you, we hit it right in the middle with, with EXP being, um, a high, com a high commission split, high value. It's like the right. perfect balance, uh, right. and, and where real estate worlds collide. And, and I don't know that you, that, that you could one up this business model just based on what, what I've seen. But so for you, like, you know, and I, I, I want to, I, I can't believe we've already been doing this for 39 minutes, but what I want to, what I want I want to know from you, like, is what do you think the, the, this EXP business model, what do you think it does to, do you think it changes the game for traditional brokerages and, and companies like Remax long-term, yeah. like three, five, 10 years? I do. Yeah, I do. I think we're going to witness in our lifetime, and I think it's going to be sooner than later, just they're going to be gone. Like we're going to talk about, Blockbuster, where are they? Gone. I, I think these old models, I don't think they can react fast enough. You know, where um, Blockbuster could have bought Netflix for not a lot of money, and now Netflix can buy Disney. And so, you know, an Airbnb, you know, they were kind of scoffed at by the um, travel industry and hotels laughed at them, and now they're the largest hotel provider in the world. I think we're going to see that where I don't think brokers are going to be able to react and create something like this fast enough. And I think the exodus is going to put some brands out of business, not yeah. just, you know, not, knock it down. I think eventually they're just going to uh, go by the wayside. They won't be able to adapt to this. And so, um, and it's, it's a good thing. Like consumers drive change and we are, you and I, we're the consumers of the real estate brokerage world. You know, we can either become a broker or we work for a broker, but we are the consumers. Mm -hmm. And once we start to speak and we know what we want, the consumer is going to drive it. And uh, at the growth that, that EXP is happening, growing faster than Keller Williams ever did or any company ever did, it's going to grow so fast. They just, you can't react fast enough, I don't think. And, and, and the consumers, we're going to demand this. And why would we ever go back? Why would I ever change this model? Because there's so many ways that we're winning and we've talked about it you just have all of these different areas that we're winning that why would i want to start my own brokerage what would be the benefit and so um what would be the benefit of going back to another brand like that they're just in what we have here on so many different facets and layers you're not going to be able to duplicate elsewhere i think yeah. you're right they nailed they it they, there's some very very smart people that put this together and um it's going to change more. Could not agree more, my friend. So, so to that agent or broker out there who is listening, um, and obviously we speak very highly of, of the company, um, and, and we all see thing, things through a different lens, um, but what, what do you say to that individual that's maybe curious about EXP or, or wants to learn more about it? Um, you know, maybe they're on the fence. Yeah. Um, I think all we can do is open up a loop of curiosity. Here, here's what we're seeing. Do you see it? Let's take a look at it. But 
the benefit is going to be, you know, you, we've, we've mentioned a few times, but I, I've latched onto this phrase, like from here on out, who I become. I know what you're going to say. Product, <laughs> well, <I do. laughs> Go for it. Go it's for it. Of the books I read and the people I meet. Yeah. So that's who me becoming my best version is tied to those two things primarily. Yeah. So this is going to just accelerate that way more than any other place can. So just give you some perspective. My Remax office, we were top five in the country for productivity per agent. Of all brokerages, Remax, KW, Century 21, like that office averaged nearly 200 grand of commission GCI per agent. Yeah. It was a big, big office. So I was already around the best people I could. And what I've learned in six weeks, seven weeks of being at EXP, I've gotten five years worth in six weeks. So the amount of people I have Amazing. met, talked to that, you just can't discount. And so if if you're an agent looking for personal growth development, like the sequence of success, you will not have a better opportunity to tap into more people and more people that are vested into you than, than this model. So even on a traditional at Remax, if I if I grew by a million dollars of, of GCI, what did that really do for my broker? Yep. You know, how, how much of that was really being kept versus how do we get invested in each other into that growth? And when you've got six, seven powerhouse people invested in your growth, you, you have no chance but to succeed if you just do what they say. You're, here's the hashtag for the show. Your, your network determines your net worth, right? That's, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So that that's that's awesome, man. Listen, I've so enjoyed my time, Dave. Um, are, are hopefully you're going to EXP Con? Are you going to be there on Sunday? I'm not. We oh. we booked a. I know it, we booked another conference in Vegas, and it's it's like my sixth conference since September, and yeah. this one more was my wife would she's a saint, but I just felt like one more was gonna tip the scales in a bad way. So, yeah. Yeah. You're treading so we're gonna go right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would love to go and I'm bummed we're not gonna make it and we'll be we'll be there next year. But I had to kind of pick my battles and we yep. we already had some things booked. So um I get it, brother. Well, but, Hopefully we'll see you at yeah. the shareholders meeting in, in the springtime. And um listen, don't be a stranger man. Thank you so much for uh, being authentic and, and sharing your story. And uh, I, I hope that uh, that we can connect again soon. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Thanks for setting this up. Thanks for having me on. And let's stay in touch, man. All right, brother. Thanks for delivering today. All right, thanks. You crushed it, man. Are we off? Yeah, we are.